So whose testimonial is that? Is it ours or is it his? Both, yeah, why not? Okay. Why not? How many people have created a vine? Saw you in the back first. Here we go. Thank you again for participating. How many people know what a vine is? Okay, it's Twitter that has you doing six second videos. So you create the video and it loops. That was their style when they first brought it out, Vine, V-I-N-E. And it loops, just a little video, okay? And it shows up in the stream at this point. So you can, now, how many people have heard of Instagram? Okay, hey, we'd love for you to connect popular, with us, apparently. by the way, on Twitter <laughs> and also Instagram, if you're on Instagram. How many have ever used an Instagram video? Okay, it's fairly new. It started on um, the iPhone. I can't help that. That's their fault. Uh, and iPhone this, rules! Uh, and, then, and then it comes over here to Android. <laughs> it's a 15 second video. I want to tell you a little story. Ladies, you don't have to listen to this story, but you might be able to relate at the same time. <laughs> the men's room here in this hotel stinks. Okay? So I went in with my Instagram, and I went from stall to stall to stall. Bald guy to in the bathroom stall. with a camera. Watch out. <laughs> And I showed that there was no toilet paper on any of the rolls in there, and there was a toilet covered with toilet paper. I took it up to the front desk and I said, is your manager here? Um, let me get the manager. The manager walks out and I said, you have 10 minutes before I release this video. <laughs> now, what I want to tell you is, and they didn't get it done in 10 minutes, there were 11 minutes and that video was out. What I want to tell you is, this is... <laughs> This is not a story of extortion. <laughs> what I want to tell you is, is that we all have our recording studios in our pocket. If you think your customers, clients, or patients won't do that to you, you're just not up to date on what's going on. If your restaurant meal is not very good, you now have an instant way to get that out everywhere. right? If I put it on Instagram video, it can go right into my Twitter right away, it can go into my Facebook right away, it instantly. I used to do, that's why we call it one camera, one take, I used to do, hi, this is Charlie Seymour Jr., and I'm here with Sandy at JV Alert Live. Now, Sandy, tell us a little bit about your business. She would then speak a little bit, and I would then come back and I'd say, now, that's Sandy. Look for that link at the bottom of our site. Go find out more about Sandy. You really want to get to know her. Then I'd take that back. I'd put it into my computer, I'd upload that to wherever I was going to upload it, let's say it was to YouTube, I would then make it and make sure that it gets out. Now I have it on steroids. I may be limited to 15 seconds, though social cam, which is another one, can go longer. I now can do that with Sandy and have it out instantly. Okay, so can you create a video like that? Absolutely, absolutely. So you should know about that whether it's a defensive mode right. or an offensive mode, you need to know about it. Yeah, it's just another reason you really need to dominate your space. I mean, you know, my clicker. most of the marketing side we're doing is to create dominance on the keywords that people are searching so they're going to find you and do business with you. But do not neglect dominating your name, your business name, and all of that space because that's the defensive side. We, we've had some clients where we're doing the flip side. We're doing repair work. It's the same exact strategy of creating a large volume of, of content, but now it's defense. It's trying to push negative content out of you. We, we've had clients who have lost $200,000 gigs uh, like that because of one nasty piece that got you know, published on somebody's blog. So protect yourself by dominating your name and your business name, as well as then using the same strategy to dominate the keywords and right. drive business. Have lots of videos up there. So now we're going we're gonna to change uh, pace just slightly again. One night I was in my grandson's room, not long after my father died, about 16 months ago. And I have my grandson in my arms, and I'm feeding him a bottle, and we're cuddling, and the sound machine is on, and the waves are making noise. I'm getting almost as drowsy as he is. I've got that bottle in here, and it was a real bonding moment. And I looked down at him, and I thought, if I die right now, he will grow up not knowing me. 
Selfishly, I didn't want that to happen. I grew up in a family where we talked about Uncle Jack all the time. He was a big professor of, at Penn in theater. He was Hal Prince's favorite director, favorite uh, professor. I didn't want that to happen with me and my grandson. So I started LessonsFromMyGrandson.com. Some of you have been nice enough to come up to me and tell me some of your thoughts about that, and I appreciate that. So we're going to see one of those right now, and I'll stop it a little bit before it ends because I have a comment on what I did near the end. Have you ever wished that you had a magic wand that you could wave and solve all the problems and you would have no more lessons you had to learn? Here's a lesson that Beckett taught me. When you bang your head, it hurts. But sometimes we have to go through that. You know, whether he's riding his car around, that he's pushing, it reminds me a little of Fred Flintstone, you know, pushing with his, and he bangs into the table. Or when he's reaching way far under the table to get one of the special things that he wants. Maybe it's his little dog that he wants to come out. It's a toy dog out from under the table to play with. He bangs his head. Sometimes there are tears. But these are lessons that we have to go through. And believe me, we will remember them when we bang our head. We really appreciate your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you.